Welcome back to the channel and today we are working on the scan PC. That's right, the scan PC. And this is a perfect example of why you got to be careful when you're buying a used computer on these uh, marketplace websites. The Bookface, The List of Craigs, Evil Bay, The Maserati, you know, those types of websites, yes, you can get a good deal, but if you're not careful and knowledgeable, you definitely can get scammed. And that's what happened in this case. So let's talk about what happened. So several weeks ago, I posted a computer for sale. Um, really good price, really good specs, had the RGB, which we all know, RGB sells, and I had a lot of hits on it. And I'll post a link to that video um, of that computer and everything if you want to check it out. And um, I had one buyer who was interested in it, but because of the schedules and the fact that he lived two, two and a half hours away, we weren't able to line it up and we both agreed, all right, move on and maybe he'll pick something up next time. A few days later, he reaches out to me and he says, hey, I bought a computer, um, but it's not working and I think I got scammed. So I said, well, send me pics and um, specs, the listing, let me see what you got and I'll let you know. He paid roughly $250 for this and he said when he got it home, it's not firing up, it's doing weird things and he just can't seem to get it to do anything. He reached out to the seller and the seller said, oh, I had to take my hard drive out. That's probably why it didn't work. And then um, he said, hey, can you fix it, refund, all that type stuff. And of course, the seller ghosted him. And it's rather unfortunate. Now, the specs listed for it was like an i7 10th gen um, RX 580. Pretty decent specs for $250. But if it doesn't work, I mean, was it really that much of a good deal? He took it to a friend of his and a friend of his said, um, yeah, it's going to require a little bit of money, um, a little bit of effort. Not sure if we're going to be able to kind of fix it. That's going to make it worthwhile. So he reaches out to me. We kind of go back and forth. A couple of ideas, diagnostics. Long story short, getting this computer running was beyond the scope of his abilities. And um, so I got to thinking about it and I kind of felt bad for the guy. You know, it's an unfortunate situation. You spend $250 for something to get you started and it doesn't work. So I uh, looked at what I had lying around, had a Precision T3620, and with a $10 adapter, was able to put a graphics card that I had lying around along with a power supply and made a decent gaming machine. And I told him, hey, let's swap it out. I'll take this and I'll see if I could do anything with it. Best case scenario, I got a case. Worst case scenario, junk. So the guy and I met, he came by the garage, had a little brief conversation about uh, what he was trying to do in gaming, showed him the precision, showed him what it can do. And yeah, I mean, i7, 6700, I believe we had a, what did we put in there? We put in a 1650, 16 gigs of DDR4 and it worked great. His biggest thing was he was just trying to play um, GTA 5, I guess the online version or something like that. Whatever the case may is, um, he's happy with it. It's been actually a couple of weeks and no complaints and here we are actually almost six weeks later now I know yes this thing has been sitting in the garage for six weeks and I haven't messed with it the reason why is that got another car in the garage um, I do have a garage channel where I do automotive stuff and other type of garage stuff DLM garage so if you want to see me work on um, cars and a lot of the stuff I'm, uh, I do outside of computers definitely check it out DLM garage this is a 2009 Toyota Camry, paid $1,000 for it, had a couple of issues that the person thought was major, turns out wasn't that bad. So if you wanna check out check out that type of stuff, definitely check out DLM Garage. Now back to the tech stuff. So let's go ahead, let's dive into it and let's kind of see if um, we can recoup anything on it. Looking at it, and if you kind of look at some of the shots um, earlier, it probably doesn't have what they say it has um, I could tell you that right now just looking at the graphics card so let's take this off and as you can see it has the uh, you know the tempered glass but there's only two so we're off to a good start I mean at least it's easy to take apart Ooh, that was sudden And as you can see, we got a disaster. Uh, Mitch match memory. This definitely doesn't look like an RX 580. This drive is just hanging there. But at least we got a drive. Um, not sure what that is. Probably for the fans, maybe. Um, yeah, that's fine. Cable's just all over the place. Yeah, okay. We got two fans. Maybe some RGB. <sighs> And as we can see, a Gigabyte GA H110M motherboard. So, yeah, I 
doubt this is an i7 10th gen. Just a hunch. But we got Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi antennas. Wi-Fi's good. Uh, let's take this back panel out. Let's see if there's any other surprises back there. And do we have anything? Um, that. We got a Corsair 450 watt power supply. If it works, that's good. If it doesn't work, darn. But, yeah. So I wonder what that noise is. I'm willing to bet it's the fan. Yep, that's great. So graphics card is probably shot. So let's turn this thing off. And I think the first thing I want to do is just kind of go ahead, make sure everything is seated, push things in. Oh, that wasn't in. Okay, that clicked. CPU is, that's loose. So before I go diving in and fixing that, I'm just gonna put it this way because if the CPU is, you know, the heat sink is not properly bolted, at least the weight will kind of hold it in place. Mostly just, you know, I, I just want to get a post. So let's double check the memory, make sure it's seated in. Let's try it now. Oh, yeah. Huh, <laughs> power. Ooh, we got a new clicking noise. Ooh. Graphics card fan, not happy. And we still got nothing, so let's dissect. So here's my thought with the train in it. This CPU should have a integrated graphics, so let's plug this into the HDMI, which I've already gone ahead and done. I'm just gonna pop this on. We're not gonna play Fortnite and you know jump into intense gaming. We're not gonna do that. We just need to get this thing to post. So let's just tactfully put that there. And now let's fire it up. Man, that cooler is not happy. Well, there you go. A bad graphics card. Who would have thought? All right, let's power this thing down. Let's kind of come up with a plan of attack and we'll discuss it when we come back. So I got to thinking about it and you got to use what you got to kind of move forward. And it's one of those crossroads. I guess that's the best way to, you know, to put it. Cause uh, yeah, you know, we can hunt down an I-7 6700 and, you know, get a, like something like a 1080, pop that in here and, you know, try to flip it and make a small margin or you could just use the parts that we have. You kind of got to know your community if you're going to be flipping used computers to see what's in more demand and what's going to give you better bang for the buck. Case in point, I get a lot of people who need potato PCs, mostly ones just to pay uh, for Roblox for their kids, office, computer, browsing, all that type of stuff, maybe watching some Netflix or, you know, the TikTok, whatever they decide to do with it. And even some light gaming uh, like Fortnite, and you could pretty much play that on performance mode on almost anything. So going through the parts pile, this is what I came up with. Got an R7 370. This one came out of another computer that I got on the Facebook Marketplace. Was able to flip that one for a um, pretty good profit on that one. So this graphics card should be perfect for that. As this R9 270, kind of a shame. Um, I don't know. Maybe we could play with it, bring it back to life. Not exactly 100 sure what's going on with it. But then again, I've had a bunch of these go bad in uh, used computers that I picked up. We are going to use the Wi-Fi card because, um, believe it or not, Wi-Fi sells. If you have a computer with uh, some Wi-Fi Bluetooth action, people definitely like that. And that's one of the questions I get asked all the time. Does it have Wi-Fi? So we'll have to consider that. Now, as far as the CPU, I need a CPU. And looking at my stash up there, I don't have any i5, i7s. But I do have junk computers lying around. So a while back on the Facebook Marketplace, I actually found a couple of these. Um, a guy was selling them. These are the Optiplex 7040. I actually have uh, another one that a viewer has sent me for another project I'm working on. But I actually picked up uh, five of these for $20 a piece. And yes, I know, proprietary, it doesn't work, but it's got a CPU, it's got memory, and most of the time you could pop in something like a 
W4100, a 1650 without the supplemental power. And these things will flip really quick for about $150 to $200, just depending on the price that you put into for the graphics card. So I believe this one has an i5 6400, 6500. So let's dig into this one and see what it got. There we go. I'll pop this open. Now I did do a video on like putting a better power supply and even case swapping that. So if you're interested in it, definitely check that video out and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out. And if I can remember how to open this up, nope. Is it just nope? Oh yeah. All right, just like so. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these had the i5-6400. So there was five of them. One of them did have an i7-6700, but I already cannibalized that one. I think the rest were um, i5-6465. And they all had 16 gigs of memory. Yep, i5 6500. So let's get this thing out of here. Man, they used a lot of thermal paste when they uh, worked on that. Perfect. So that saves us money, repurpose it, all that good stuff. Now let's double check on the memory because that one and the other computer has mismatch memory. And I'd rather have matching memory. Oh no, these are 8 gigs. Yeah, these are 8 gig systems. So I'm just going to leave this in here and we'll deal with the other match match memory. Sure, I'll be fine. And for the sake of preserving the pins, let's put in that uh, Pentium CPU in here. Because, you know, you want to keep it safe. I don't have the cover. Some people use plastic. Uh, if I have an old crappy CPU, that's what I use. Alright, I'll put that back together. So we got our parts, our i5-6500. I am going to use this 500 gig SSD. Now in the past I used to use the 120 gig and I put in like a 1 terabyte mechanical drive. But I have found that people get confused easily. And well, they call you, oh, the hard drive is full. and don't know what to do. And what it is is that they fill the 120 gig SSD. And I mean, they're not sure or knowledgeable on how to use the 1 terabyte. So... I just use this. You don't get phone calls that way. So now what we're going to do is switch to the montage, clean this up, and uh, when we come back, hopefully everything works.
and she lives. But it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, but at least we were able to bring it back and reuse the bones of it. It had good bones. A case, Corsair 450 watt power supply, a motherboard, memory, and that was pretty much it. CPU is junk, the graphics card was junk, and as you can see, we made some changes. So let's talk about it. So as you can see, added some RGB. Had a bunch of those strips, they're like five or ten dollars, and you get a remote, and with the remote, you can change the colors and you know, kind of go for that custom feel. So we decided to add that. As you can see, the fans are different. So uh, these are the hype fans that I came out of my hype case. They're brand new, they work pretty good, but you know, they're not PWM, but they work good for computers like this. I was able to uh, pop these in and then just use a splitter because this motherboard only has one extra header for the fans and put one in the front for intake, one in the rear for exhaust, and we deleted on the one on top. And the reason why because of that is due to the CPU power connector. It was too tight, wasn't fitting, and didn't like that too much. Also, the other fans, they had a short on the PCB they were attached for, and I kept on getting an issue where the computer just kept on randomly resetting. Long story short, when I disconnected that, my issues were solved, so those fans had to go. Now I'm using the stock CPU cooler as for this i5-6500. It's more than enough, definitely will get the job done. This thing does not run hot and runs really cool under um, load. I think the highest I saw was like 67, 68, and that was actually pl after playing like uh, 30 to 45 minutes of Fortnite, also with some stress test on it. Now as far as this case, junk. I hate this case. This DIY PC case, I'm sure it was a pre-built. I don't know much about it. I'll have to do my own research on that but it is really cheap really flimsy not much room um airflow is like limited to none so uh yeah uh if anybody has this case definitely just get rid of it and get yourself something better as i mean this is a real cheap case unfortunately the leds up front don't work because it was attached to that board i talked about earlier so no rgb as far as that strip but we got the other rgb strip so that's a good thing now as far as airflow um if you kind of see, it's like right there. That's as much as you get. And that's all it's sucking in. This i5-6500, it doesn't get hot, so this works fine. But I mean, if you were to put a more beefier graphics card and CPU, you might run into some heat issues. So as far as what I would sell it for, roughly $150 to $200. Um, it just kind of goes about what I have into it. Realistically, I mean, technically, I don't have anything into it. Yes, I traded the other computer, but um, the money I made from that, I actually made it back just selling parts off the other computer and other different things I was able to get from it. Not to mention, I mean, YouTube, yeah, I'll get revenue for that. So as far as what I have into this, it's completely nothing. So if I sell it for about $150 to $200, it's all profit. So as far as the scam part of this story, yeah, the dude was definitely scammed. I mean, this is definitely not an i7 10th gen or an RX 580 or anything remotely near it. And this thing had just issues from the get go. Fortunately, I was able to salvage the case, the power supply, the motherboard, the memory. I mean, we couldn't even use the cooler. And those are the good bones. And because I do have a lot of spare parts lying around, I'm able to put a computer together, flip it, and make some money. But if you're not computer savvy or if you're unsure, this is my recommendation. Number one, um, try to buy something new. Or if you have a friend or if you know somebody that knows enough about computers, have them check out the PC, get their recommendation, get their specs, or even send an email. Like I get emails and messages all the time about computers people are interested in, and I'll tell them straight up, yeah, good deal, go for it, not a good deal, or I'll give them suggestions. Hey, can you request a video or an image of it running or you know some stuff like that? That is the best way to do it if you're looking to get a used computer and you're just not too tech savvy. But at least this story has two happy endings. The guy who bought this, um, thanks to you guys, the viewers and watching the videos, I was able to hook him up with a decent computer, the Precision 3620, which runs fantastic until this day. He's had no issues and it's been several weeks and he's very happy with it. And number two, I actually get to build another computer, put one together, make a few bucks and make another video. So that was actually pretty cool out of it. So comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticisms. Have you been scammed before? Because even someone like me, I've been scammed. I mean, I do tech stuff. I tinker around here and there, and I've been scammed on it. You know, let me know some of your scam stories. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.